Hey, what's up, everybody out there in the world of YouTube? This is Barnon11970, and I thank you for watching this video. All right, this could potentially be a long video, but if you watch this entire video, hopefully this will either give you more information that you already have or awaken you to the deceit that I think, like the title of this video, is one of the biggest lies that we've had to endure in our lifetimes. Now, there's going to be a lot of history on this. I've been doing a lot of research recently because I really am tired of our government's lies and how they steal from us, how they take advantage of us, how they lie from us, how they are separating the division between the upper wealthy who own 90% of the world almost and the majority of people who are being crushed down in the submission. It's just time we start awakening to the truth of what's going on. And a lot of it is through the English language and the way they use different terms to deceive people. And one of the things I'm going to talk about, which is um, one of the things my one of my subscribers, um, Andy Williams, good eye, Mike, by the way, um, was talking about the other night. And that's about your birth certificate. Now, I've been researching a lot of different people. Um, if you want a person where I learned a lot of my stuff from, but not exclusively, because I get ideas from a bunch of different people, and sometimes you can get more information from hearing several different people and kind of putting their pieces together to draw better conclusions. But one of the people I would highly recommend if you want to learn about trust law and what's going on is Dean Clifford, D-E-A-N Clifford, C-L-I-F-F-O-R-D. Um, I would look, watch more of his newer stuff because he's learned a lot more since then. But I watch a whole bunch of other different people. But let's get into it. All right, your birth certificate. Your birth certificate is not you, even though you think it is, because obviously it has your name on it. So you think. Now, if you watch the video I made just yesterday about the laws and lies, you will hear um, things that I discussed about things in all capital letters. There's a term called legalese, which is legal definitions of words. Like, for example, the term understand. When somebody asks you, do you understand something? In other words, do you comprehend it? Do you get what they say? Now, in court, the legal term for understand is not what you think it is. It is actually when a court asks you, do you understand the charges presented to you? What that means in legal terms under legalese is do you stand under the court's authority? In other words, you're basically admitting guilt. So this is how they trick people, and they've done it for a long time. Because unless we know about these things, how could we protect ourselves? So as far as the birth certificate is concerned, or any kind of license or government registration, the one thing you will notice is your license or your birth certificate or anything will be in all capital letters. Now, my driver's license, I'm not going to show my last name, so I'm not even going to show it. But um, when you're born, your parents sign a document, your father and your mother, provided the father is in the uh, vicinity and in the life at the time. But under normal circumstances, you have a father and a mother who sign. It's verified by a doctor. And this is called a certificate of live birth. Now, pay very close attention to that. When you mail that to the government, you get back what you think is a receipt for what your parents signed. Now, if you notice, when you get your certificate, it is a birth certificate. Now, notice one thing that's missing. It no longer says certificate of live birth. It just says birth certificate. Now, I'm going to give you history about this, because this has to do with admiralty and maritime law. Now, if you're not familiar with that, that's another reason how they can basically dupe you. Because, like they say, ignorance is no excuse of the law. The way that countries, before planes were ever created or used in mass uh, quantity, the majority of transportation to get goods from one country to another was done by boat. So they created a maritime laws. Now, when, let's say, for example, let's say China is shipping goods in the past. Now, I'm not talking about present. They still do it, but this is how the birth certificates got created. Let's say a, a Chinese ship is bringing their cargo, cargo to the United States. Once it docks, they have to register everything. So 
Like, for example, if you buy a DVD player, a computer, you buy any kind of electronic or any kind of device, you'll see it has a serial number on it, a registration number. So each item has to be registered. And what they do is at that dock, they create a birth certificate. Now, it doesn't say certificate of live birth because obviously a DVD player, for example, is not alive. It's a birth certificate. Now, what is a certificate? In um, government definitions, a certificate is basically authority of authorization. In other words, something that the government owns. You certify things. So when you talk about a birth certificate, you are, sorry, I'm just trying to look for a certain term. You are basically giving your ownership to someone else. So, for example, like if you have a business certificate, you own that business. You're being certified. So this is how they trick you. When you're born, you're issuing, like I said, the certificate of live birth. When you bring that document into you, a government, they issue you a birth certificate. Now, with maritime law, the way it works is, once you hand in that certificate of live birth, you're supposed to know this, even though they don't tell you and you have no clue about this, and this is where their fraud comes in and their intent is really well shown, that you're supposed to report to them and say you're alive. And if you don't, the governments report you as officially dead at sea. It doesn't mean you're actually dead. It means they can't confirm you're alive because you didn't say, hey, I, I sent in that document a while ago. I just wanted to let you know I'm here and I'm alive. Like, for example, at Gilligan's Island, if you ever saw that TV show, they would have technically been considered dead at sea, even though they were all alive living on that island because they didn't report back for years to the mainland. They would actually have been documented as dead at sea. So when you have a birth certificate, it's technically a death certificate because even though, let's say your name is John Doe, you're born, your parents write down on the piece of paper say, signature saying that that's your child and who is it signed by a doctor well remember in maritime law a ship what does it do it docks so it's signed by a doctor aka a doc now the reason that it's considered maritime law when a child is born into the uh, world is because basically we are made of mostly water when we're born we come from a woman's uterus which is you're you're floating in fluid born onto land. So it's symbolization of you leaving the vessel being placed onto dry land. So they basically take you as confiscation. They take you as property. So when you get that birth certificate, it no longer says, they take out the word live. So it's no longer a certificate of live birth. It is a birth certificate, which means you're technically lost at sea, reported dead, and they take a certificate in your name and create a fictional character where you become a citizen and a person of for the, exact, for the purposes of United States, United Kingdom. It does not matter. Canada, the same everywhere. So that document that says Jane Doe or John Doe is not you. It is your name in all capital letters and in law. Anything that is in all capital letters is signified as a corporation, a fictional character, a fictional entity. So if you haven't noticed on the back of a birth certificate, it says do not use for ID. Now, if you ever got a driver's license, what is the first thing they require to show proof of who you are to get that license? Well, you're using your birth certificate. So they're basically telling you, don't use this as ID, and you use it anyway. Now, again, if you watch the video, and if you haven't, I really recommend you watch it. The video I just made about the laws and lies yesterday, it talks about how in law, silence is the same as compliance, which means you don't have to agree or disagree. If you are silent when somebody makes a, a request for something, it is the same as you agreeing. So basically what the governments, the way they fraud you is they say, without saying it, we're making a fictional character based on your name. And you're supposed to report to us that you're alive so we can't do it. But because you don't know about it, we don't tell you, your silence tells us it's okay to do this. In other words, that birth certificate is technically your death certificate. And you're walking around using 
this information to get other bits of government entities, like, for example, a driver's license or a business license or a marriage license or a certificate to register vehicles. So you're basically acknowledging that they are creating a fictional character which is subject to their rules and regulations. Now, why is that? Let's say, for example, you're the owner of a business and you have an employee. Well, as an employer, you can't go around punching your employees. You're supposed to take care of them. So you have to pay them. You have to make sure they have fair wages. You have to make sure they're in a safe environment. But you also make the rules and regulations. Now, if a person doesn't show up for work, you could fire them. Or if they show up late, you can dock their pay because you're the owner of that business and they work for you. They are subject to your rules. Well, the rules of the governments, for example, when they trick you into believing that your birth certificate is you and you use that to get a thing like a driver's license, well, you're basically an employee of that person, of that government. And it's their responsibility to take care of you. That's why they use rules and regulations. But they can also extract money out of you if you don't follow your, their rules. Like, for example, if the speed limit is 55 miles an hour and you get pulled over doing 75 miles an hour, because you're using a driver's license, which is a fictional character, a corporation, they can't, they're not taxing you, the person. They are taxing the corporation under that name. And because you go to that court as a representative, you're the one that gets charged because you think that's you. It's like, for example, if you are a stockholder, the main stockholder for a company, and they have a stockholders meeting, you're showing up to represent that company, but you are not that company itself. In other words, let's just say, for example, ExxonMobil. You're not ExxonMobil. You may be the president of ExxonMobil. You may be a shareholder, but you're not ExxonMobil. So this is where they trick you and scam you. So when you look at all your government certificates, unless you have political connections, unless you have paid off all your wealth, unless you're very wealthy with lots of connections, you're going to notice that all of your documents are in all capital letters. That is not you. So if you really think about it, when you the next time you watch a zombie movie, or the next time you watch, like for example, the TV show The Walking Dead, it may make you really think about the fact they're actually talking about you because I'll give you a prime example of why that's not as crazy as you might think because when they talk about zombies they're not talking about actually dead people rising from the graves they're talking about people that are walking around alive but they're actually technically dead and if you understood what I meant about the fact that when you're born through maritime law they create a fictional character in your name and actually pronounce you dead because you don't contest it and say, here I am, technically you're walking dead. But think of it this way. When a prisoner is about to be executed and they walk him to the gas chamber or wherever, the execution chamber, what do the other prisoners say about him? What do they call him? They call him the walking dead, or actually dead man walking. So it's not that he's dead at that moment, but he's about to die, so he's walking to his death. So even though he's still alive, he's ultimately going to die. So they're basically mocking you because of our ignorance. And it's time we start sharing this message because haven't you had enough? Their job is to extract as much money as they can from you. So instead of having the free man's right of traveling wherever you wish to go, they limit how you can travel and they can tax you and charge you and penalize you and punish you for following underneath their rules. Who needs a marriage license to find someone you're attracted to and want to spend the rest of your life with that person? It's all about extracting money. So if you're tired of being robbed, if you're tired of being lied to, it's time we spread these messages and research these things. Don't just take my word for it. Look into these things. Because we should really be tired of the fact that they're taking advantage of us. And if you think of it this way, like some people can say, well, it's a contract, you know about it, and you're basically complying with it, so that's how they get away with it. Well, that may or may not be true, but if you think about it, they've committed fraud, and they are not giving full disclosure of a contract, which would technically void the contract if people actually stood up. Because let's put it for an example. If your parents 
just as they gave birth to you, a doctor comes in and says, you have to sign this certificate, this live birth certificate. And before you sign it, the doctor says, listen, I just want to let you know, before you sign this document, when you both sign it, we're going to send it to the government. They're going to c c announce your child is dead, technically. They're going to make a false identification of that child, which will basically enslave them for the rest of their lives. Do you think your parents could be like, oh, really? Where do I sign? No. Just for example, how we're protected as citizens or as human beings or people, whatever you want to say, if you go to a car dealership and you're going to, to buy a brand new car and you look at a car in the showroom and the salesman comes up, it's like, oh, that's a great choice. Just came off the, uh, the line. It's it's brand new. It runs perfect. It's the car of the year, blah, blah, blah. Whatever he says, he totally convinces you that you want to buy that car. So you sign the contract, you lay down your deposit, and they say, all right, in a week, we'll have it delivered to your home. Week goes by, you get the car, you go to turn it on, doesn't start. Lift up the hood and find out it doesn't have an engine. And you go back to that person and say, well, I just bought a brand new car. You told me it runs fine, it's perfect, it's this, that, and the other thing. It doesn't have an engine. And the guy turns around and says, oh, well, you signed a contract, guess you're obligated. No, because then you could turn around and sue that individual for uh, for fraud and basically not giving full disclosure, and you'll get your money back, and that person will probably get probably imprisoned, or he'd get in at least a lot of trouble for that. He could lose his license to sell cars. So just because a contract has been made, if it's not made in good faith and there's not full disclosure, well, then there is fraudulent intent. So if people started to realize around the world that our governments are basically lying to us, they're committing fraud, and they're not creating full disclosure about what you're signing, well then if enough of us stood up, well, wouldn't that void the contract? Void the ownership? And all that money that we paid into the system be returned to us? I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. But I at least want to think about it, and I want you to think about that. So... Thank you for watching this video. I'm not going to make it too long. If you have any questions, please let me know. And remember, guys, there are symbols. I've made a video a while ago about the fact that gold trim around an American flag is not an American flag. It is actually admiralty law. It's a military flag that shows that wherever that flag is, it's telling you you are entering the waters of not literal sense, but a figurative sense of admiralty law. I suggest highly you research admiralty law, research common law, and start learning about this stuff. Trust law. This will help you. So if you want to be a slave of the system once you know, well, then you can't have any rights to complain about what's going on and how you're being treated unfairly because of the fact that when you have a driver's license, when you have all these licenses and government permits, you're allowing yourself to be in their world, in their system where their rules apply. That's why when you go to court, you don't get the rights that you think you do. Because once you go to court and acknowledge that you are that person that they say is on that document in all capital letters, you've basically unwillingly no, notified them that you're a corporation under their jurisdiction. Think about that. Thanks for watching, guys. Leave your comments. Share this video. I don't get a lot of views. And I think that's a sad thing because with this kind of information, it could help the world. If you don't believe in what I say or you think you could do it better, by all means, make your own video. This is not about me. This is about truth. Thanks for watching. Peace.